my favorite pottery people. I'm Sarah. We're in the studio today, so you know that means we're going to get dirty. Today's video is going to be all about cookies, and in particular, raised cookies. Uh, quite a few of you have asked me how I make raised cookies, and this video is going to show you not only how to do it on the wheel, as in this piece, but also how you can do it using a slab. So if that's of interest to you, you want to stay tuned to this video. All right, cookies. Cookies are going to be your savior, your holy grail, especially if you plan on doing drippy glazes. As you can see, these drips would have ended up on my kiln shelf. It may have actually, and if, honestly, if my piece wasn't raised up, my piece would have fused to my kiln shelf, which probably would have ruined my piece. So if you're dealing with glazes that are drippy, this is going to be something you definitely want to take some time um, and make because it's much better to smash these. And if you've been watching any of my videos, you've seen me smash quite a number of these. Um, so this particular one is thrown on the wheel, which I am going to show you how I do that. Um, and then I've actually coated it. <laughs> I don't always do that and I, I need to get better, but this one I've coated with kiln wash. So that's even a double whammy to really help protect my pieces um, from, you know, again, fusing to a kiln shelf, which would like, honestly, you don't want that happening. So I'm going to show you how to make it on the wheel and I'm going to show you how you can make it. This is a regular cookie, not a raised one, but I'm going to try making them on um, using a slab. I haven't done it before, but we're going to figure it out together. And I'm going to use cookie cutters, but I'm also going to use some just household items like little Pyrex dishes, you know, because maybe you don't have a cookie cutter at home, um, just so that you can try making these. Now, ideally, the higher temperature clay is your best bet uh, when doing um, cookies because again, they're gonna last, it's gonna give it a, a longer lifespan. I don't have any like cone 10 or anything like that. So I'm just using reclaimed clay today. Um, so that's another great use for your reclaimed clay is, you know, make cookies out of them. But um, I have actually some news I wasn't going to share it this way. Guys, I'm getting a new kiln. <laughs> I ordered it like two weeks ago, right now, two weeks. So I got to wait up to six weeks. And oh my God, so I'm, I'm getting ready for it. So I need to prepare and have all these little goodies going on in my kiln. So yes, brand spanking new. I got, I'm getting a Conar kiln from Tucker's Pottery. You've seen me go on a tour and I've asked them if they'd let me, uh, take you guys and see it if you know when they start building it so I have to wait and hear back whether they're gonna let me do that or not um, I understand health and safety going into the the back area where they actually build it but um, <laughs> I'm very excited about that so <laughs> Ooh, anyways um, so yeah so I need to prepare lots of little cookies for my studio so I thought I would share with you um, there are other things you can do as well I mean I brought over you know some you can also raise your pieces up on stilts like this. Um, I, I mean, it's it's something you can do. I I don't like the little holes that it creates on on the bottom of my piece. The little it's like little pin pricks almost. Um, so I I'm not fond of it. Um, it. Again, it's up to you. I mean, you can Dremel and grind it out a little bit, but in a pinch, yes, I will and I have. Um, but in a way, this is my holy grail. In a pinch, when I've not had um, enough of these handy and I have a lot of drippy pieces, I've just used a flat cookie and one of these, you know, half inch kiln supports and been able to raise my pot up this way. And it too has worked. So it's actually easy peasy. These aren't expensive. The square ones as well. Again, I've done that plenty of times but this is my ideal and favorite it's easier to maneuver in your kiln with that little lip all right so let's do it on the slab and also look at all this stuff honestly you guys this is where it's been the last little while so if you saw my studio tour you will remember on my slab roller that um, I asked you guys for any advice if any of you had the, the you know the little mini slab roller that had all that gritty bits. I was like, what is this stuff that was all over and, and you know, falling off of the, the actual rollers? 
Um, some of you suggested that I sand it down and add oil and so forth, and I was like, yeah, that made sense to me. And then uh, I decided when I was over at Tucker's, ordering my kiln, um, I spoke with um, one of the a gentleman there and asked him about it because they had the slab rollers and he was like oh yeah no that's how they used to make them with this gritty stuff um, now they make it with almost like a rubberized compound and he said I think there's a solution but he said he'd reach out on my behalf which was wonderful so he reached out to Bailey's Bailey's came back with instructions on how I could actually fix it and I've done that now <laughs> I started filming it um, but uh, there was just far too much swearing on my part. <laughs> I was so frustrated, oh my word. Taking the thing apart and then even trying to get it back together. Oh, I got it, it, it happened. Um, but uh, it's fixed. So, you know what the fix was? So this is Super 77, it's a 3M. It's a spray adhesive, it gives like a almost like a rubbery texture to the wheel. So it's encapsulated all of those little gritty bits. I didn't have to sand it off, literally leave it alone. I took it apart. I used frog tape, which of course is an amazing adhesive. You don't want anything kind of stealing in, but on the little posts, once I got it apart, the, there's like rods in either side of the, of the, um, uh, of the rollers. And so I taped that off. I brought it out to the garage and three coats of the Super 77 Classic Spray Adhesive. And um, that's it, put it back together. <laughs> it's amazing. So fixed, and now it's like having a brand new slab roller. And apparently they've said they've got slab rollers five years, still going strong, no problems. Um, and if I do experience a you know, problem later on, I just do it again. So what an easy fix so very happy so I'm, I'm sharing that with you guys in case any of you uh, you know have one like this the, the the hardest part was taking it apart and like again I would have shown you but it wasn't it wasn't a good moment of mine so we all have them right so anyways let's get to making some cookies you can see my fingerprints. I probably should have waited an extra day <laughs> for them to dry. Um, but you know what? It's not it's not sticky. It's just got like a almost like a rubbery compound, but you can see it's completely encapsulated. Nothing is falling off anymore. So this is my fix, my dears. If you got a problem with it, it with yours, it's gonna work perfectly fine. So I when I was at the pottery store, I bought a couple of these slab mats. So they are a smooth you know, they don't have the texture to them. Um, and I bought a couple, something for darker clay, something for lighter clay. I still am, have been using just a little piece of, of um, canvas, just because I find this, they get moist pretty fast. Now I'm gonna start off a little bit, a little bit thicker. Work my way. mini mite this is great you know what it's a great little slab roller it's little look at that nothing crumbling the other one was crumbling everywhere it works perfectly so what an amazing fix I am so happy with this like on, oopsie honestly brilliant look at that <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this. Because I do want it to be a little bit thicker, I want it, I want it to last. One more time, slightly thinner. So this one, the way you raise it up, you add these little boards. And then you pop the whole thing into the feed and you crank it perfect for if you have a smaller studio and you just you know you still want to have uh, access to something that's going to wheel out your pieces nice and smoothly
And you know what? It's not even necessary to really, I mean, other than from a compressing, compressing standpoint, again, this is not a functional wear other than it's something for your kiln and help you save your pieces. So it's not fancy schmancy. Like I said, you can even see some of the clay, the mixture of the clay here where I didn't wedge it in thoroughly. And that's okay. And again, I am going to put kiln wash on it. Because ideally, if you're not going to put kiln wash on it, you want to be mindful because the clay that you use for your cookies can bleed through to your final uh, piece. And you might see like a bit of browning or something on the foot where the cookie is if you're using like a, let's say a white clay in your, your piece and then a, um, a darker cookie you or a speckled cookie for instance so be mindful of that it's always good you know to just be careful I've been having great fun with great fun with hand building um, <laughs> I you know it's it's something that's a little bit more newer to me I used to hate rolling things out you know by hand with a with a, with a rolling pin but um, I just found it was easier to throw on the wheel but when you start hand building, it just opens your life to so many different forms and shapes. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited with that. So I'll be able to play a little bit more with you guys. Now that I have a little slab roller, it makes my life nice and easy. Okay, so I have cookies and I, you know, you can get them from the baking section. I've labeled them. So I know that this is a four and a half inch cookie. This is a three and a half inch cookie. You know, it all depends on the size that you want. You want to be mindful because again, the footprint is going to, it is going to take up real estate in your kiln, in your firing. So you may not want to go too, too big. Um, but I find having a variety of sizes is very helpful. Now I could use, um, what's my call it? Cornstarch, but I'm not going to, it's not sticking yet. So just going to cut out a few. scrap pieces of um, drywall um, and just put tape around the edges. It's a great working surface. So I'm just going to put these cookies, what I've done so far, just here. I don't want to destroy this because I'm going to use the remaining clay. And last one here. Now I'm going to try using the small cookie cutter here. It's one and a half inch. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. And you don't have to have that little hole in the middle. Like, you can do what you want. But I'm just going to raise these guys up. That might be small but it will fit the foot. So you can see where I'm going with that, huh? Cut them, and because the clay is so moist right now, it's gonna stick together, so. So we'll try some different ones and see what we prefer. I'm gonna try slightly bigger. Because this clay is thicker here, so I'm just gonna do two. See how thick that is. Oops. One more, because remember everything's gonna shrink, so I'm gonna go pretty pretty high with it. Because if you've got like a bowl or something a little bit bigger, you wanna have you wanna have a variety of sizes so that you can cover that real estate and catch. Yeah, that's good. So Want it flat. And let's do this. Cookies can be hard fired. Just make sure it is absolutely bone dry um, because you don't want it to explode. And then, you know, if it does explode, it'll probably take your piece out with it. So you want to make sure it's absolutely bone, bone, bone dry before you, if you're going to try to just hard fire. And for those of you who don't know what hard fire means, it just means going directly to your glaze fire temperature. 
Um, you can do that with these, not a problem. I have done that many a times with cookies, um, just like a flat cookie. <laughs> and as long, again, as long as it's totally dry, you're golden. You can use a Pyrex dish as a guide. And who says cookies have to be round? You could do square cookies, but that's a cookie. So in the same way you would make a cookie, you're making cookies. <laughs> exactly the same way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take all these little bits here. And I'm gonna wedge it up. And I can make more. So they don't pop off because you know you're gonna be firing these many times hopefully you don't have to destroy them after one use I just want to make sure that they are nicely adhered same thing on the back here for a little while and then I'll come back and clean everything up just let it sort of really melt together Anyways, I gave it a little bit of time to set up I took some of my little dry wall pieces and just sort of pressed down ensuring we got a nice whoops flat top this one looks shorter so it's not getting pressed down Hang on. And so now what I'm going to do is, I mean, not necessary, you could leave it like this, but I'm going to cut out the centers just so it helps dry and, and more evenly. So I just have a little itty bitty um, cookie cutter and I'm just going to put it down the center. <laughs> it's going to be pretty deep. Huh? I said I was going to be figuring it out with you. So let's just... <laughs> Oh boy, didn't think that through, did I? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do it this way. <laughs> oh, that did not work. Okay. I have visions of it being really cute. Too deep for this. I do have this little, I don't even know what this is, but something small just to again drill a hole in the middle. Yeah, that's gonna work good. Pull it out and to help it dry more evenly. I prefer the thrown version. I think it's easier. But again, not everybody can do it, but you get the gist of it. This is my first go at throwing up, doing them in a hand-built sort of way. Um, and maybe I'll perfect something, make it a little bit better. But I just thought, hey, I think we could make something. 
And all of this is going to shrink. I know they look big, but it's going to shrink. And uh, hopefully it'll shrink enough. So I want to give credit where credit is due. I got the idea of these raised cookies or drip catchers from Old Forge Creations. Um, he's out of the UK and has a great YouTube channel. I watched a video a few years ago and honestly it, it was game changing because I've been doing these raised cookies ever since. You guys keep asking about them so I thought I would show you how I make them. Um, and just so you know, I know someone's going to say how much clay do you use? I use random weights it's you want to create a variety of sizes you want to create different um, heights within uh, the centerpiece you know this they're going to help you out in the end don't go too high because again remember then it's going to take real estate up between the top of your piece and the next shelf so you want to be mindful of that so what i've done here is i have centered a, a small piece of clay and then i have drilled right to the bat Okay, so you wanna go drill it right down to the bottom. And then you just move your fingers out just a little bit and split the difference between the center hole and the edge of your pot. And as you push down, what will happen is the center will start to come up and you begin to create the actual raised portion of the cookie. Uh, be sure to compress uh, the, the bottom. Again, that's gonna make it nice and strong. Um, and then as, of course, you can begin pulling up the center to create the height that you desire. Compress, compress, compress. Make sure it's nice and strong. It will help to ensure a long life, as long as, of course, you don't have to smash it off your pot. You will get a lot of a life out of it when you take your time doing these little details. And basically right now I'm gonna use a rib to kind of lift up the edge just to give it a, an access point so it's easier to pick up off of the kiln shelf or even when you're trying to position it in the kiln, that little lip makes all the difference. Using the edge of the rib just to again, give it a further compression. This is gonna help keep it nice and strong. I'm using it even on the surface that will be in contact with the pot just to make sure it's nice and level and again as strong as can be and that is it y'all that's gonna make your life so much better so i love throwing these on the dirty girl bat system you can also use the bleaker system and that's available on um, amazon they look exactly the same um, but what's great about it is you will just take it off of the master bat and then leave it to dry i don't cut it off N tomorrow they will pop right off and they will dry up super quick so it's the next day and um i my my memory card oh sorry i'm burning incense little nag champa gotta love it so if you see the smoke that's what it is i like my my incense um so i had to uh kind of walk away because my my memory card was full and it's halloween and i just went you know what let me take care of the kids and whatnot so here we are november 1st and i'm just finishing up this video um and uh here we are so next day they're already dry i mean they're still a little bit cool to the touch so you're going to want to let them dry a little bit more um oh, my face allergies i tell you you're going to want it. some of them warped a little bit because i think i was i was fussing with them a little too much when they were still in that dampness stage so note to self try not to move them around and then the ones that I threw, you know, they are, they literally re release themselves. And I'm gonna just run a, just my finger along the edge. I mean, it, it doesn't matter because guess what? This is something that eventually is gonna, you're gonna smash. I'm just taking down any hard edge, whatever. But that's, they're, they're golden. They're ready, they're, they're ready to bisque fire and, um, and I am going to bisque fire because I want to add kiln wash. I find it, a kiln wash goes on much better when it's um, been bisque washed or bisque, washed, bisque fired rather than just hard fire. So I'm just going to uh, put the kiln wash on them and then use them for my next firing. And guys, help me name my new kiln. Um, I never named my previous kiln. She was, you know maybe that's <laughs> part of the problem so i would love your feedback on what i should call my brand new kiln when i get it so that i can have an official 
official thing. So again, down below, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. So with that said, let me know what you think of this video. Say hello. Let me know what part of the world you're from. I just love hearing from you and I answer every single comment that comes my way. Uh, it might take me a couple of days, but I do get to them. And, um, and if you're not already following me on Instagram, find me over there. Let me know what you think of the hand-built ones. If, you, if you're liking that idea, um, if you have a wheel, these are so much faster. I found much faster than the hand-built. So um, if you've got access to the wheel, just, you know, you got a little bit of random little bits of clay at the end of your throwing session. Just throw a couple of them. And again, it doesn't matter the size. Have some bigger ones. Have some smaller ones. Have some taller ones. It's the variety that you're going to want to use in your kiln when you're actually firing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. And of course, I'm going to ask you to hit that like button. I should say it's going to be over here. Hit that like button. And until next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free. Come on now. Who doesn't like free? And don't forget to like it. It means the world to me. And while you're at it, don't be shy. Leave a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching.